Can you see the, the, the cross carved very deeply and how each of the images of the divine have been chiseled, have been desecrated? Can you see that? When I say that Christians attempted to destroy the comedic tradition, I'm gonna tell you that we could do this all day long. I want to respond to something you said. First of all, I thought it was interesting that you show those pictures of the crosses and stuff like that, you know, over the, the comedic temples and whatnot. I thought that was very interesting that you showed those, but what you didn't show was you know examples like for example uh like with Akhenaten how they you know the, the later generation destroyed some of his stuff because he commote he had uh committed himself to a, a certain form of monotheism that didn't jive with the, with the tradition at the time oh no don't shake your hand you can come back and prove me wrong but the bottom line is when they came back later on they destroyed some of his stuff or we could talk about a iconoclasm people can look that word up iconoclasm in ancient Kemet, for example, we would have grave robbers who would go into the to the tomb of somebody they didn't like and chop off the nose of their of their statue or image to signify them not being able to live on in the afterlife. So that's a kind of classism too. Or when you had other people, you know, what I'm saying of the Kemetic tradition who would change their beliefs. Because again, Kemetic, you would agree, has a long history. So beliefs change at different points of time, and they would go back and redact or change or mar old statues and so so on and so forth according to the values and ideas of that time. So when it comes to pinning all this on Christians as if we're the only ones riding around destroying statues, that's about the most comedic thing in the world is to destroy statues for religious that you don't agree with. That's called a iconoclasm. Lastly, it's not true that all of our ancestors came into Christianity as a result of the bull whip. I have a book right here in my hand called The Corpus of Early Arabic Sources for West African History. And on page 250, we have an excerpt from a letter in which um, uh, Mansa Musa attests to there being Christians in his kingdom of Mali going back to the 1300s. Again, that's corpus of early Arabic sources for West African uh, history. That's at least a century before any European set foot in West Africa, uh, snatched up anybody for slavery. So there were Christians in West Africa, there we go, there were Christians in West Africa prior to the transatlantic slave trade by the by the attestation of Mansa Musa. We all know who he is, King of Mali. And so you can't say that, oh, we just came into this because of change. That's not true. And I think it's a shame that you're misrepre misrepresenting your Christian West African ancestors like that. And we need to honor their heritage just like you would any other tradition. That there are some that argue that Augustine was um, uh, ethnically African. I even argue that. I even argue that. Okay. But okay. I will say to you that as long as those people are still destroying the traditions of ancient Africa, then I would think that he's perhaps just as confused as respectfully I think you might be. So the only people who have, uh, who have their wherewithal about him are people that agree with you. How is it that we hear all this stuff about how great Kemet was, how great Africans were, so on and so forth, but when we have our African ancestors who by their own will chose to adopt Christianity, all of a sudden they're just whitewashed and dumb. At the same time, y'all call Christianity a white man's religion. At the same time, if you look at some of y'all heavyweights, they cite Helen Bavosky, who was white. They cite Gerald Massey, who was white. They'll cite Wallace Bud, you know, who's, who's translated your text. He's white. Leah Fabinius, he's white. So y'all got all these white scholars from the 19th century who your heavyweights cite. And then all of a sudden, we're the ones that have the white man's religion? So I began to read European masterpieces and I began to read European curiosity about Africa. Gerald Masses, six volume, Egypt, Life of the World, two volume, Natural Genesis, two volume, Book of the Beginning, two volume. And I began to read Gerald Masses' attitude on religion and his idea that nearly European concepts of religion were stolen from outside of Europe. He was not a historian. He was not an Egyptologist. He was an agnostic. Fighting the arrogance of the European of that day. See, the history club led me to not only re reading masterpieces by black, white radical writers who set the black radical writers in motion. A whole lot of claims blacks did not make until they saw the documents in what's written by Europeans. So y'all got all these white scholars from the 19th century who your heavyweights cite, and then all of a sudden, we're the ones that have the white man's religion? Please, that's why we're talking about a new and strange religion, because you guys 
preach stuff that would, is like literally unrecognizable to an ancient African. You guys teach stuff that come from Hella Bavosky, who was a Satanist or, or whatever, how she defined herself, but certainly not, you know, uh, informed by African tradition. And y'all swear that we're the ones coming with the white man's religion. That's so disingenuous, it's not even funny. So I'm getting, I, listen, I'm, I said ahead of time that when it comes to some of those difficult questions, I'm gonna uh, take an L and give a halfway answer and provide a source, which I did so people wanna look All further. Right, but go, at the end of the go. day, y'all gotta, gotta, gotta stop the hypocrisy though, man. Cut the hypocrisy out.